I don't think it's ever going to be easy. Um, there's no doubt there, uh, there is more controls with the bike. It's more artificial. Like for instance, this bike to race at Laguna Seca was very, very difficult to ride because we are only, the, the, the throttle opening full is only 18% of the lap. So most of the time you are only quarter throttle because it is spinning or is wheeling. Because we have no rider aids, no electronics, it's no artificial. So it was very physical demanding these bikes. And also it's two stroke power, so the power band is very, very strange. So I think now the bikes, uh, these, the top riders are, um, sure, they have some aids, but still very difficult to ride. Myself, I believe they need to take some aids off. I think it's too much now. When they start the race and they just, they hold the throttle like this, and then they, they do that. I mean, to me it looks like, but you know, it never does. No doubt, the electronics has helped the, ride, uh, the high side. And most of my crashes was always with the throttle. You know, so, um, so now, any time a racer can walk away at the end of his career, and he is walking away, I'm happy for this guy. Because it's a very brutal sport. But um, I'm not so, you know, I think um, if there is one positive thing about that is the electronics helps in that regard. But now we are seeing with the one tire rule, maybe the compounds are a little bit hard. Um, I think there needs to be some more development to help the rider uh, get some temperature into the bike because to, to crash with the throttle off and have the rear come around, this is very dangerous. We are not inside a cockpit. Uh, when we make a little mistake, or we should say when an F1 driver makes a little mistake, he spins out, you know, puts it back in gear and he goes. When we make a little mistake, our elbows always are leaking, you know. You always touch the ground. And uh, it'd be like if an F1 driver, every time you make a mistake, if he is outside his car, then he understands what it's like to be on a motorbike. So, but this is the, the challenge, this is the sport, and every racer understands pain because we ride in pain all the time. You know, for, so, you know, for Lorenzo to be riding with a bad collarbone or the riders to be riding with broken bones, every generation, this is what we, you know, my generation and before me even, so this is the life of a motorcycle racer. I do think very rarely about the, um, what I miss now in my life that is very difficult. Um, you know, I miss the independence of being a man and having to ask for help to do something. Or if I cannot go downstairs or up some stairs or, um, you know, I am still aware that I am in a wheelchair and I know that, that, um, um, People recognize me because I'm in a chair. This was always uh, something that when I was racing, I, I, I knew could happen, and I, I, I avoided the thought of this. Uh, and you have to when you race. You cannot think about, maybe if I fall, I can end up in a wheelchair. But you think about it. And so I am living my nightmare. But now that I'm in the nightmare, it's, I'm okay. It's the way my life is, you know. Every day I wake up, the first thing I see is this wheelchair. And I either get out of bed or I stay in bed. And so um, I've made my life, uh, I've adjusted to this, my circumstance, the best I can. But there are still some days that are very difficult. Sometimes I, I get mad, but um, yeah, I'm over it. I was... I was pretty much okay with most of my rivals, except Kevin Schwantz. We just, um, we didn't like each other. And it started in America when we raced each other. And he didn't like me first, I think. And then um, we just, um, we just didn't like each other very much at all. And, and it showed on the racetrack, we didn't like each other. And then he won Suzuka our rookie year. 
And um, so that started uh, the rivalry here in Europe. Yeah, so that was pretty real. But, you know, after, um, after a couple seasons of racing Eddie and Gardner and, and all the other racers, you understand that it's just not about me and Kevin. It's more than just me and him. It's about, uh, you know, we, ha we have to race everybody here. So I think as we got older and we matured, we kind of mellowed out a little bit. But uh, always on the circuit, though, uh, he was the first guy I thought about wanting to beat. But very, very strange, though, the other, uh, about um, maybe about two months ago, uh, some guy called me, and he was at uh, the circuit, and it was Kevin Schwantz, and he called. And uh, so he come over, and uh, he, he arrived, and we are having some, he have some dinner with us, and we were just, we were not speaking about racing, just speaking about nothing. And um, so I said, I, where are you staying, you know, when you were here? And he says, oh, I haven't got a hotel yet, you know. So I said, well, I have this big house. I'll, I'll put you in the room farthest away. <laughs>